Welcome to our podcast. I'm Dad's ex. And I'm the next. And again, we do not have a plan this week. No. That's kind of becoming the new normal. It's hard to plan when we like are both working. Yeah. And we have a zoo. Of, I have a zoo of children. I don't know. And Apparently, I now have a zoo of children. You, you have a cat. That's, I have a cat. It's not my, a zoo. <laughs> my son is pretending to be a cat right now. Yes. And everything's just been busy. I've got soccer, and mm-hmm. which we won our first soccer game last week. Yay! That was exciting. Okay. And Jesse actually got scouted out by a rain the director, one of the directors of the Rangers, which is like the local select traveling team. So he got to go practice with them this week, which was pretty exciting. And now we'll have tryouts at like the I think it's the end of this month or next month or something. Yeah. I don't have to look at the thing, but so that's really exciting. That's like the elite <clears throat> soccer team yeah. of Whatcom County. And so. I'm like, you know, I'm like, thanks. I've coached him the last two years. <laughs> so like, You did it. I did it. I did that. <laughs> All that. I made it. I coached it. <laughs> That's me. You're welcome. Um, you know, humble brag. It's fine. Um, and that, I mean, what else? Oh, Nick hurt his ankle. Yeah. That. So what? he got a third degree sprain, so that was fun. That was a whole time. And he is being a dumbass and like walking on it and doing stuff. He's like, my brother says just walk it off. And I'm like, oh, your brother is going to get our medical bills then when you need surgery on your ankle. <laughs> it just reminds me of the time of when Will legitimately broke his toes. And she's like, quit being such a baby. <laughs> You're such puss. This sounds so bad, but <laughs> he's like staring at me from the kitchen. So he stumped his toe on a pack and play, and this was this was a while ago. This yeah, this was like at least a year or two. Ago. Yeah, because we still had a pack and play for Caden. Yeah, uh, and he stumped his toe on it and was being such a baby, like he was so <laughs> upset. I'm telling the story from like how it happened. Okay. This I'm admitting at fault here. It was a, this was a <laughs> bad wife moment. We had shit to do. We were we were shopping for furniture. We had like a whole plan of stuff that we were going to do, and he, yeah, he was not reacting very well. And I was like, "You stubbed your toe. Stop. Like, Get over it. Put on your fucking shoes. Let's go." And so he walked on it all day while we were shopping for furniture and with the kids and everything like that. And it wasn't until we came home. And it wasn't that he, like, was wearing normal shoes either. Like, he put on his fucking work boots and, like, laced them all the way up. So they were, like, tight all the way on his foot and his shin. Yeah, he comes home and he takes off his boot. And I instantly felt so bad because half his foot... (laughs) Half his foot was swollen and was, like, almost black. The bruising was so bad. So he finally like goes into did did you go to a walk-in clinic? Yeah. Yeah. So he went to a walk-in clinic and sure as shit, he broke like three of his toes. Yeah, I felt like a really bad wife. Meanwhile, their dog. (laughs) Oh my god, I forgot about I was Oh my god after Will about being a fucking baby about his bro legit broken toes. And then their dog is like not putting weight on his paw. Yeah, he was their like... Their dog's a corgi. A dr- one of their dogs is a dramatic little princess. He it's is. So bad. She yeah. spends all this money at the vet to like... Literally like X-rays. $700. Everything. And all he did was stub his paw. He li- Everything was fine. <laughs> it was so fucking stupid. He was like chasing the kids around the yard. Tripped as much as a corgi can trip. Yeah. And was limping around. And we even, like, ah, we'll give it a day. It'll be fine. And he still was just, just like... limping around. And I was like, fuck, great. Like, we actually did something. Took him into the vet. Apparently, corgis, because of, like, their short nature, have very special ligaments and shit. So they had to send the x-rays off to, to a, a specialist, specialist to have them analyze everything. And, yeah. And literally, the results, they call me. And they're like, yeah... They didn't have the decency to just fucking tell it to me straight because they knew how fucking stupid this was. 
there's some slight bruising around one of his toes. It's like, are you, are you fucking telling me right now that I've just spent all this money for you to tell me that my dog's I'd rather his his toe be broken, <laughs> right? Like, like, make it worth it. It was like seven hundred dollars. Yeah. And sure, as soon as we got home, he's fine. He was fine. Yeah. Fucking fine. He's like, oh. You gave me the attention that I... He's an attention whore. Yes. You gave me the attention that I wanted. I'm fine now. And that, as well. that happened, like, around the same time that Will broke his toes. <laughs> so it was just, like... Even my mom was, like, oh, it was, uh... I can't remember. My mom, like, sent me a text where she was, like, oh, is Clyde just being just as dramatic as William? <laughs> it's like, it's oh, like, to yeah. be fair, William, like, legitimately broke his toes. Yeah. Clyde's just a pansy. Yeah, Clyde's just a princess. Yeah, he is. <clears throat> God. That's so funny. Such a freaking wild time. Yeah, so, but Nick, with his third degree sprain. And his ankle has been, like, huge. Yeah. It's, like, swollen. I've heard that sprains are, like, worse than breaks. Because th- with breaks, you can at least, like, set it and, like, let them heal. Whereas sprains, there's nothing that you can do. Yeah, so I guess that they told him, because it's a third degree sprain, which is like the worst sprain that you can get. Yeah. And they like told him, all right, well, like you either are going to need to be on these crutches with like, he has this like little splint type wrap thing, mm-hmm. or you're going to have to leave in a boot. And he's like, fuck the boot. Give me crutches. Yeah. Um, but of course he's like not, not using. using them. <laughs> So then you should have gotten the boots so that you could walk them, around. Yeah, he used them for like the first day. Um, but like he still went, yeah, it just has been a whole thing. So I keep telling him, I'm like, you're going to fuck your ankle up more and then you're going to need surgery and then you're really not going to be able to work. And then what are we going to do? Because like you can't carry any of our babies. Yeah. <laughs> so like how am I going to go to work or do it? Yeah, so that's insane it's been a whole a whole thing but yeah he seems to be doing better i guess at least i don't know well that's good fucks for him shouldn't have fell off a ladder yeah maybe be more careful that was your first mistake yeah dumbass (laughs) we're great wives yeah (laughs) oh man the best so good so best Oh, we're so good. <laughs> we're tired, man. It's, it's I, been, I worked last night. It's been crazy. I'm just yeah. like, I didn't I didn't even bother today. Like you're getting fucking hot mess express with the same wobble bun. Same. Actually I'm pretty sure I still have a pimple patch on my face. Yeah, you do. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> got a little star right here. Got a little star. Cute. Uh yeah. Yep, that's actually it's like the one tic tac tic Jesus. Ticky tacky. Tick tock. Yeah, tick tock product that I've gotten sucked into that I actually really enjoy and it's like actually worth it. Um because I actually work pretty well. Because mm-hmm. I'm like with my ADHD, I'm like a skin picker, and so this prevents me from like picking at my face and it has made my acne much better. Mm. So Ooh, do we want to go into your ADHD official diagnosis? Oh, yes. So, and we've talked about it before. I, like, I know that I have ADHD. But I, with being laid off and not working for, like, the last, like, nine, eight, nine, nine months. months, I have, like, re- like, all of my routines that I've developed over the last 30 years have gone to shit. And so I'm finding that I'm falling into, like, really bad habits with, executive dysfunction and finding motivation to do things um and the really exciting thing is that i got a job like an actual legit full-time job where i'm like going back into an office and shit very soon and that fact is very daunting and terrifying it's gonna be good for you though it's gonna be so good i'm very very excited but i know that i'm going to need help like relearning like how to focus and get motivation and like get back into these routines and so I wanted to seek medication because I've been unmedicated this entire time. Uh, well, I went to my doctor and they were like, hey, yeah, your diagnosis is fake. 
because when I had originally got diagnosed, I had used <laughs> my husband's cooking dinner in the kitchen. So if you hear random noises, just this is how oh we're. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Dumb face. This is this is how we're doing it. Um, when I first tried to get a diagnosis, I used BetterHelp, which it's not a bad program. Like I. I think it's a great program. It it does have licensed therapists and things like that. Um, but it was like the height of COVID and that's where like these type of virtual therapies got really, really popular. And according to my doctor, they would like just slap diagnosis on people. And I will admit, like even when I went in for my initial consultation, my initial consultation on BetterHelp, like it was very short. They didn't ask me a whole lot of like questions. They did not take me through like an official like ADHD questionnaire like I had to do with Carly when she got diagnosed. They asked me a couple of like generic questions and was like, yeah, that fits the bill. And then they gave me like a very high dose of Vyvanse, which if you don't know, that's like a stimulant medication. That's yeah, it, it just like it was not a great time. So when I tried to get that medication again for my doctor, he was like, mm, yeah, you didn't see like a, a psychiatrist or like somebody that I would actually like legit trust a diagnosis from. So I'm not comfortable giving you the meds that you need. So I had to restart my whole mental health journey of trying to get an official diagnosis. So I did that um, over the last couple of weeks. I found somebody who did it through telehealth, licensed, legit. <laughs> Psycho, 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 licensed psycho. psycho. <laughs> that's, I don't even think that's the right word. Psychiatrist. Psychiatrist. There we go. And yeah, she took me through a lot of different questionnaires and I got my result. Uh, what was that? Yesterday? Mm. Day before? I don't know. This week. I no, got... yesterday. Yeah, it was yesterday. Yeah, because it was while I was getting ready for work. Oh, okay. And when yeah. you got off work. Oh, yeah. Mm. It was yesterday. Oh, no. It was. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we had a consultation yesterday where we went over all of, like, my answers and scores and stuff like that. And it, <laughs> I felt very attacked and very called out because there was one test, uh, and I don't even think I told you this, but she sent me a document that I had to fill out for myself, but then William had to fill out for me. <laughs> no, yeah. I knew this because, what was it, last week something happened? He's like, do I need to change my answer? Oh, that's right. Yeah, I do remember that. Uh, yeah, so apparently... You should have had me fill one out for you. Yeah, I <laughs> should have because William called me the fuck out. <laughs> you think I wouldn't call you Yeah, out? I mean, that's, that's fair. <laughs> but there were like some categories where it's like, I still met the threshold, but I was severely like dampening down like my symptoms of like, oh, they're really not that bad. And then Williams would be like the 95th percentile. And I was like, oh. It's bad, it's bad, it's trust me, it's bad. <laughs> Send <laughs> um, Yeah, but she, um, we it was like three different hour-long sessions where we went through like hyperactivity and attentiveness like a whole bunch of different questionnaires so it definitely felt a lot more thorough and i felt really good about the diagnosis that she made whoops wow uh and so i ended up walking away with yes i have adhd i have the inattentive type of adhd whereas carly has combination um, which is hyperactivity and inattentiveness um, but she also said that with, which apparently is very common with people with ADHD, but I also have um, reject sensitivity dysphoria really, really bad. So not only do I have inattentive and executive dysfunction, yes, I know, husband, stop staring at me like that. Uh, but I also have rejection sensitivity dysphoria, which is great. So now I'm on the next steps to get medication and all those things. So yeah, it's been a fun little journey where I've proactively been seeking out somebody to call me out on all my shit. So <laughs> it's been great. Well, and you know what's even more fucked up is that she even at the end of the session yesterday, she was like, cool, any other questions that you have for me? And I was like, nope, but like, that's everything. Like, thank you again so much. Like, I really appreciate it. And she's like, cool, one more thing. 
And I was like, uh oh. She's like, yeah. So about 95% of my clients will contact me the next day and will have like self doubt and think that they like lied or over exaggerated or like did something to where like they think that they, they gave themselves a misdiagnosis. It literally, and that they like tricked them, like tricked me into giving you this diagnosis. And I was just like, I would never do that. <laughs> As I was like immediately on that call going, I fucked up. Like, there's no way I don't have, I <laughs> like, I had to have lied. I tricked her into making her think that I have ADHD, but I don't actually have ADHD. Like, I felt so called out in that moment. She's like, I do so many different questionnaires and versions of questionnaires and in-person interviews for that exact purpose you couldn't have like tricked me like you you this diagnosis is so real. don't call me tomorrow <laughs> Literally, she's like do not doubt yourself you legitimately have adhd i'm gonna send you a certified letter with your diagnosis you're fine don't doubt yourself i was like oh, okay immediately hang up i lied about everything <laughs> <laughs> my <laughs> life is a lie <laughs> I made it all up. I lay on a bed of lies. <laughs> I was like, damn, do we all really do that? Like, what? Ah. I second guess things all the time where I'm yeah. like, okay, but did, is it really, do I really do that? Yeah. Is it this, really that often? Is it that bad? That's so funny. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So now I have an appointment to start figuring out like what meds I can try and things like that. But yeah, I think. I already knew that I had ADHD, so I, like, wasn't really surprised by that. It was, like, the rejection sensitivity sense of the, Jesus, RSD. I'm just going to call it RSD from now on. That one threw me through a loop. And I, like. Really? Yeah. I could see it. Yeah. Oh, William could see it 100%. Yeah. I've. I could see it in me, too, though, just because I'm so, like. Yeah. I am scared to bring up conversations mm -hmm. because I'm afraid of like yeah, what's going to happen. <laughs> right. And well, and that's my thing is that it's like Willie made a great point where it's like I've prevented myself from going after so many opportunities because of that fear of rejection. And I so I started doing research. I she sent me like a lot of resources on RSD and like where it comes from, why it happens. And it's, it's really fascinating, but it's like, it all comes from a sense of, it's like a biological response. Human nature is to have a, a form of attachment um, where you want to feel attached with like the group of people that you're in. And so people with RSD, it's not necessarily like a fear of rejection, but it's like a fear of losing your group because back, back then, like we're talking like caveman days if you didn't have a group you died <laughs> so, right so it's like it's literally your basic human you're saying instincts. if i leave you you're gonna die yes <laughs> duh <laughs> uh, but it's like basic human instincts to like want to be a part of a group and to not lose your group because your body is like trying to like save, survive survive yeah, yeah it's like trying to save your life so instead of just being like a reasonable human being you're instead looking out for all of these ways of like oh they hate me or oh the like i'm always like oh i i shouldn't have said this in a conversation literally i do it all the time or like we're all like think back on conversations and i'm like oh was that too much should i yeah. have said that right or like william will like sigh a certain way and i'm like great he's gonna divorce me like he's I do Nicole, i'm like are you are you mad at me yep. yes yes okay and yes. like will you shut the fuck up I'm like, <laughs> you're gonna make me mad at you I'm like, I'm so sorry. You just look really angry at me. This is just my face. Yeah, Nick does have real bad RBF. Yeah. I'm I'm sorry. It's bad. I, actually, I'm not sorry. He knows. You have RBF. It's really bad. <laughs> I always tell him to, I'm like, well, can you just fix your fucking face? Well, it doesn't Cut help to all the time. When he has facial hair, like it makes it worse because it's like you he can't. He always has facial hair. What do you mean when he has facial hair? I've also known him for when he didn't have facial hair. I could not. <laughs> I'm very uh, honest with him about how unattractive I find that he was <laughs> before him and I got together. 
You yeah. and I have very different tastes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I could not. <laughs> Love you, but like. <laughs> Don't shave your beard, apparently. Oh, no, he knows. <laughs> I freak out when he shaves his mustache. I'm like, oh my god, no, don't kiss me. Kiss me till it grows back. That's no. so funny. Whereas, like, I'm the opposite where if, like, Will doesn't, like, trim his beard or mustache, I can't. Like, his needs to be, like, right now, it's, like, borderline unkempt. And he'll need to trim it soon. I don't, he can trim it, but he cannot shave it off. Oh, mm. No. You've done it before. It, you're fine. Oh, super yeah, yeah. My husband did the Super Trooper costume, so he shaved everything except for the handlebar mustache, and it was... Glorious. I made him shave the rest of it the a night, once the night was over, because I just, I couldn't... Child pedophile. It looked... Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us what you really were for Halloween. <laughs> It was not, it was not a good, it was like, get you a white van with free candy on the side like that. It was not a good look. How fucked up would that be to do on Halloween? I'm pretty sure you would get arrested. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm fairly <laughs> certain that's a one-way ticket to jail. I'm do not I'm try it. Now. My best the friend and my husband are going to get our bonus parents get arrested for Halloween. And go to jail. That'll be our Halloween special. <laughs> God, this is the story of how I had to bail out my husband and my best friend. <laughs> God, not much is different in my life. I'm thinking of going back to school. I'm so excited. Yes, I'm very nervous. I have like, I didn't graduate high school, which is like a really sore topic for me because it makes me feel real shitty. Um, but like, I was homeless my senior year of high school. To say the circumstances around it yeah makes and sense. like i tried i did running start so i was taking a college class i was taking sociology and then i was doing nine high school classes like at the school um and then i also was doing three online classes and i just needed my like three online classes i had to do like a final test for them mm -hmm. but i had to like have a certified um, like person give me the test and it cost money and like I was on my own and I was also working part-time so it's like I had to pay for that on my own and I wasn't going to be able to do the testing till like after graduation and the school was like well you can't walk with your class if you're if you don't and so it like discouraged me because it was like uh I just like felt like I got rejected Yep. And it like I get really discouraged and unmotivated pretty easily by things, especially rejection. And so I was like, cool, well then what the fuck is the like why am I gonna go through paying for this if I don't get to walk with my class? Because I was 18, like that was what was important to me was walking with my class, not the diploma. <laughs> <laughs> Hindsight 2020. <laughs> right. But so I just never did it. So now I'm looking at like getting my GED, which I'm like really nervous about just because again, I'm scared of like failing and like the embarrassment that comes with that. At least for me personally, I feel like I'll be very like ashamed and like it'll be hard for me to admit to like Jess and Nick and everybody that I failed it. But Nick's really encouraging me to go back to school because, like, I hate where I'm, like, I don't like where I'm at. I don't like working a job that I don't feel fulfilled at. And that's literally just a job to, like, make money yeah. that I dread going to every night. <clears throat> and this job in particular is just really, um, I don't agree with the structure of it, I guess you could say. Like the point system. Oh, and... yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like the policies yeah. that they have. They they're stupid. I used to work for this employer and so I'm very familiar with like the attendance policy and like like it, for instance Nick stupid. sprained his ankle and so I had to call out two nights this week cuz like he can't pick up the or at least like before he was actually walking on it the first couple of days he was it's like he couldn't like pick up and carry the babies around. Yeah. So I call that a work and it's like well that's two points and if you get to seven points then you're like fired. Mm -hmm. um, and even if you clock in one minute late, that's half of a point. <clears throat> so, and it's like, there's no, what would you call like uh, exceptions? Yeah. There's no exception. Like 
you could call out because somebody You're sick. died or right. whatever and, and they would still give you points right like it's they and have no wiggle room yeah and i just don't agree with it and like other things with like the job itself like i just it's just not something that i want to do forever i don't enjoy it and i just don't get any like fulfillment out of it and so mm-hmm. i want to find something that is going to give me fulfillment so i've been thinking about going back to school i just like i have no idea what i want to do i like, mean i feel like gd and right, then gd and then i was thinking just like prereqs yeah start start on the prereqs and, and then after that though i have no idea what i want to do you, you don't know what you want to be when you grow up no that's so hard because it's like it's, i feel like it's such a big decision it really is but it's like we're also like in our 30s now oh. so it's like we i know we should have figured this out by now well like i thought about when the girls were in the nicu i really considered like mm. going to school to become a nicu nurse because like the NICU nurses were all so amazing. They helped me through like my time there because Nick and the boys were all here. Yeah. And I was away from them 90% of the time while the girls were in Seattle at the NICU. So, and I really loved all of the nurses. One of our friends is in nursing to become a NICU nurse and you still have to like do stuff with like, adults and like well yeah because you have to learn like all of the medical stuff yeah because she's like, doing I can't it handle... for the same reason like she really loved her experience in labor and delivery and so that's yeah. why she decided to become a labor and delivery nurse she's NICU oh is she going specifically for NICU yeah oh, I did not know that I thought it was just labor and delivery no, in general NICU. Um, but yeah you got to touch old people too yeah and Delete. like <laughs> I just like it's that's not what bothers me like working with older people or like working with people are I that doesn't bother me what bothers me is I don't deal well with bodily fluids so like vomit and things so if a person vomited I couldn't handle that or like if they shit themselves I couldn't handle that You have children. I can deal with babies. That's why I NICU nurse. But like even when Jesse, uh, even when Jesse pukes, mm-mm, mm, can't. Mm. I can't handle my own puke. Yeah, I mean to be fair, like I'm the same way. Like when Caden had his pyloric stenosis and he was vomiting everywhere, I was like gagging all over the house. I can like, handle I babies. Could... Babies yeah. is one thing, and especially like NICU babies, they're all so small. Yeah, you know, puny. Little yeah little they're a little they're a little tinies uh, but like jesse can't handle when he gets sick and pukes baker what nope that's all nick and when i get sick and puke that's nick yeah like that time i got really sick and yeah. i was like thank god my bathtub's right next to my yeah. toilet because i like puked all over our bathtub yeah and it like woke nick up and i made nick clean out the bathtub like i was like mm-mm I cannot. We're not doing it. Not doing it. Nose goes. Um, <laughs> but so it's like I just can't. I just I can't stomach those things. So I just don't think I'd be able to stomach nursing like school. Like being able to, to get, get to NICU. NICU. Yeah. Uh, so something else I've been thinking though is like occupational therapy because like the mm. girls are in occupational therapy right now. Yeah. And that would be something that would be cool to do is like work with like specifically like infants children Mm -hmm. doing occupational therapy um i've always been interested in like adolescent therapy yeah so i don't know and i mean you have like really good experience and or like like, family law oh see i always wanted to be when i when i was very little my two career paths was lawyer or architect Mm. very different drastic paths but yeah like when i was seven i wanted to be a mechanic Hmm. Yeah. That's what Carly wanted to be at that age too. But yeah, she she doesn't want to go to college. Yeah. That's literally no. why she said she wanted to be a mechanic. She wants to be a mechanic because Nick was a mechanic for a very literally not what she told me. Oh really? She said, I don't want to go to school. Hmm. I said, Why do you want to be a mechanic? So I don't want to go to school. I mean you still have to learn. Like, where does she think she's gonna have to go to learn how to I be a know. mechanic? 
And that's still school. It's still school. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah. But yeah, and then it like I went through so many phases of what I wanted to do. Yeah. Lawyer was a big one. Uh, marine biologist was another big mm-hmm. one. Will went to school for that for a little bit. Yeah. Didn't you for marine? No. That I'm thinking of your mom. Just kidding. Yeah. I went for That's what it was. Yeah. Maggie, so Nerd. marine biologist. So there you go. You could become friends no. with Maggie and con- no. That just ruined that career path for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know what I. Yeah, I mean, you just spit out like five different options I there. Know. They're all good options. They're all very fulfilling. Yeah. All this prerequisite. Maybe that's what we'll do on our next episode is we'll just have like a, a spinny wheel and we'll just pick one. Explain this is the how education. the rest of my life is decided. <laughs> The Plinko. wheel of careers. Yes. Ooh, Plinko. Yeah. Plinko. Yeah. That would be a good oh one. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> We'd have to put in a b- couple of shitty options too, just um, to like no, <laughs> add to the suspense. Yeah. What is Shelby gonna do with the rest of her life? Find plumber. A <laughs> plumber. <laughs> Find out next time on Dad's X and X. <laughs> nice. Yeah. One of my in high school you take like those career test oh, things yeah. and i had a nun was one of them girl and so How? was exotic dancer <laughs> <laughs> i was like i'm gonna be an exotic dancing nun I couldn't tell you any other results that I got because those were the two that were the most memorable. <laughs> was a nun same test for an exotic dancer. You probably would have made a lot of money. Yeah. Well, that's... according to my husband, sex sells. So. Yeah, that is that is true. I could not. I see these crazy TikToks of people who are exotic dancers and like how much money they make. And it's you can call them strippers. They call themselves strippers. Do they? Us? Because I feel like they come home from the strip club and they've got like, here's a Monday night, and it's like, here's 8, a Wednesday night. Thousand dollars. They literally make like three times their rent in one night. I'm like, it's like that's the reason why I'll start working out. It's not because you know I want to like look good and be healthy. It's so I can go to the let's strip just club. Open, let's just and open up a strip club for like thick bodied strippers. There's gotta be yes. uh, like. Well, maybe it like chub rub or something. No, we won't name it that. <laughs> Thicky dickies. <laughs> we'll ask Chat GPT. We'll ask oh, him. let's do it. What, it's like a strip club name or like? Yeah, a strip club name for heavier women. For women who are moms, for women who have fupas, or for women who have C-section pouches. Because we know that that's like, there are men out there who appreciate that a lot more than skinny minis. They don't want string beans. They want... Uh, I'm sorry, but I cannot provide assistance with that request. (laughs) She put, what is a good strip club name for thick ladies? (laughs) And chat GPT was like, Nah, fam. I am uncomfy with that question. Thick lady dancer club name. Oh, she's going to try again, but a different. I'm sorry, but I can't. <laughs> Is this chat GPT? This is chat box. Oh. I bet you chat GPT would do it. Voluptuous Vixen's Lounge. Plush, Plush paradise. paradise. Oh, bodacious, bodacious booties. booties. Bo- I said booties. Oh, but that could work too. Thick and tempting tavern. Full Club. figure fantasy club. Okay, well, so I don't need to go to college. We have our career right now. Million dollar business idea right yeah. there. See? Got or we it. could just name it Dad's X and Next. No, because everybody thinks it's going to say Dad's Sex and Next. Like, that, exactly. That's the right. point. <laughs> They're going to think we're the wrong kind of club. Oh, yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> that's true. I'm I had to be like, can I rent a room in the back? <laughs> <laughs> One of my girlfriends had messaged me the other day, um, and I used to work with her at the place that you currently work at. Um, we used to work together. 
And she sent me a screenshot of our Facebook page and apparently how it looks on mobile for like other devices. Because when I look on my phone, it shows normal. So I'm guessing it's like Android devices or something. It like crops the crop photo. And it just says sex and next at the top of our, our banner on her Facebook page. Yeah. And so we had a whole conversation on it where I'm like, she's like, I honestly couldn't tell if you were doing it like deliberately or like... <laughs> And that's funny, or you didn't know, but that's also funny. So I figured I'd just let you know. <laughs> so when we came up with our name, we didn't realize. No, it wasn't until we started like creating like social media handles that we were like, oh, oh. And people started pointing it out. And we were like, yeah. yep. But we had like yep. already created a whole brand. That yeah, so we, it was like too, 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 late, too late to go back. Yep. So we just have to like change the colors and like try and separate it. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. Or, you know, a... people can just think what they want to think. It's, yeah. You know, if it's sex sells, then <laughs> there, there we go. There we go. That's, <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. Which does remind me, I was looking at getting new, a new mic set up. Like the ones in front of us? Yeah. Yeah. I was that looking. That would be great. Yeah. That's because it's like we have so many issues. Like these aren't bad, honestly, for no, the price. Great. Like they are pretty decent for what they are, but, and the sound quality is good, but I have to remember to charge them. Uh, if we have to remember to not touch them. Yeah. You can't wear the right touch clothes them, for them. Wear the right clothes so that you can clip them on. And if you accidentally brush them or in like our hair last episode shelby's hair covered it for half the episode so i had to like fix your audio because it was so quiet it's just yeah so i wanted to get one of those like cool i found some really cool ones and so but they're like like on basement backyard yeah basement back i love that podcast. i love them so, so much but if you don't follow or, basement backyard you should because they're funny. or tony and tony yes Lodge and oh god what's his name and he's the famous one too. I know. Ah, I'm so sorry, Tarpers. Ah, what's his name? Tony and R R Ryan. Ryan. Tony and Ryan. I was like, R <laughs> Tony and Ryan. Yeah, yes. love them. They're so funny. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, they um, are. They crack me up. But yeah, so those microphones are a little bit of a splurge. But now that I have. A full time job again. I can afford to do a little sporty splurge. So my yeah. sugar mama. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was looking those up on Amazon yesterday instead of doing my homework. So you have homework due today. I did them. It's I, done. Yeah, it's done. It's turned in. Oh my I know. god! I know, you guys. <laughs> this is like a historical event. Okay, this you know doesn't what? ever happen to where she's done with her homework before. Yeah. The hour that it's due. And honestly, though, for real, because I, obviously, ADHD and unmedicated, I use procrastination as a way to get things done. Because when you're procrastinating, your um, serotonin and your dopamine levels increase because it's now a stress response. And so th that's the only way that I can get my body to focus long enough to complete a task. Because she's stressed about getting it done. Because I'm now stressed about getting it done on time. So literally every week I am like 10 o'clock at night. Ooh. It'll be like a Friday night and she'll be like, well, I can't. I got homework to do. I got it's due tonight. And I'm like, motherfucker, you had a week to do this yes every and every week it's the same she story. did this when i was in the hospital with the girls like before i had them she brought her laptop and everything and we'd be <laughs> sitting there and she'd be like she'd be like okay guys i need to do my homework and so nick and i would be like trying to we'd watch like what code blue camera something yeah and then she She's would be like, like watching too and we're like or she'd be like, oh, I found this on Amazon. And we're like, aren't you supposed to be doing your fucking homework now? <laughs> like, both Nick and I would be yelling at her, do your goddamn homework. <laughs> like, try to take her phone. You're not allowed to do anything until your homework's done. Like, like I felt like a rebellious teenager with my parents yeah. yelling at me, do your homework. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Oh my gosh. As I'm, like, bedridden in my hospital bed. Like, <laughs> it was up to all these machines and medicines. And... Yeah, it was, it was real bad. So, but yes, I did it last Stressing night. Stressing me. I was like, you're stressing me out, and I need to not be stressed right now. But I knew I would be able to do it tonight because we were recording, so I got it done last night. I'm so proud of you. And you. you watched The Circle. And I watched The Circle. All three episodes, or four episodes. Yeah. Yeah. 
and now even William. And so now we are both very invested and can't wait for the next episodes to I know. come out. I fucking hate Netflix for doing that shit. I know. Because I want to know who's the least human? Who's getting <laughs> booted? Well, we know who the least human is. Well, yeah, we know. But like, I want to know. I love who's that everybody it. thinks that it's Steffi, though. I don't like Steffi. I, I would think it's her, too. Honestly, like if I was in that, like, yeah, that's real sus behavior. What did he say? I don't know, but he caught himself because he knew he was going to get yelled at because he was like, oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) My husband is trying to put his two cents in, which is normally would be fine, but he doesn't have a mic. So he's just that. Okay. So what is this a good one? Um, I haven't really read it. But it's apparent to you. Oh my like, god, is that why one. Reddit is called Reddit? Is because you ha- What? So- Did nobody else hear that? She's like, I haven't read it yet. But it's Reddit? Okay. All right. Nope. Okay. All right. I'm just going to have my own little mind blown moment. Cool. I'm going to read this now. <laughs> Shut up, Louie. It is a parenting advice post. So it says, hi, first time poster in this community. I was hoping to get a little advice. My daughter and I have started growing distant recently. Don't do activities or chores together. Conversations are limited to basic how your day went. And I'm feeling very concerned for her. I try to give her space, friend time, still try to enforce rules and routines. And I never pressure her to talk beyond what she's comfortable sharing. Three months ago, I had an officer come to my door to conduct a welfare check on my daughter. He explained that given the details of the case, he wasn't able to provide information or context. Besides, she may have been assaulted at school. I tried to speak to her about what happened, but she didn't want to disclose anything beyond what she shared. I put her in therapy shortly after the news, but the police still won't disclose anything to me. I know you can't share any medical or legal advice. I just want to know maybe some ways I can reach my daughter. I feel our relationship is suffering. Or that she needs me and I failed her. I'm very confused. 11 years old and the police won't tell you what happened to your kid at school. Yeah. And it's an assault. That seems very fishy. That's terrifying. Yeah. But it's like, I I don't know. Because I'm kind of having the opposite problem where it's, I'm, we're... We're not getting enough space from each other. <laughs> Which, I mean, we talked about it a little bit last episode. But it's like, I'm, I'm like genuinely curious, though, because I know we've talked about it before, where it's like, you can't just all of a sudden expect them to, like, treat you with respect and have this, like, communication standard with you if you haven't been maintaining that. If you haven't been maintaining that their entire lives. Mm-hmm. Because you have to, like teach them and talk to them like an adult i mean you don't have to like use adult words but like you have to have conversations with them as they're growing up for them to continue to feel comfortable yeah to talk to you so i'd like i'd be curious to know like have you been having conversations like this your entire life and then all of a sudden like a switch flipped and she's not talking to you anymore or like like what what are I the think circumstances that, like, it's good that she has her daughter in therapy but it sounds like the two of them need therapy too yeah like together together to like help their relationship and maybe like she said they don't do activities together well, like maybe start doing activities right. together like and it doesn't have to be anything like super big like go get ice cream together mm-hmm. just the two of you play a card game maybe or watch a movie paint your nails together yeah like do something together i've seen this journal on well and i got you guys yeah yeah we have one but i saw this i saw another one that's like not just for like moms and daughters on tiktok that i've been thinking about getting for me and jesse where it's just like a journal for us to be able to talk back and forth Mm -hmm. um that might be a good option there's also mother daughter one specifically that like i got jess and carly one for christmas where it's a mother daughter journal where they can like talk together or like yeah there's like different prompts that like it'll have like two pages with the same question on it and like so i'll answer the question on my side and carly will answer the question but there's also like coloring pages where it has the same like design and you both color it together like it's really cool yeah so it's like maybe something like that could help Mm -hmm. with it but it definitely sounds like maybe trying to fit in time together 
Yeah. At least here and there. And therapy would be, like, where they would need to. Yeah. And it's it's hard, too, because it's, like, you also have to just, like, you can't force them. You can't pressure them. But you need to, like, show them that, like, you're a safe space to be able to come to. I, it's, it's hard because it's, like, when you go through something traumatic. Because it sounds like if police are involved, like, there was something traumatic that happened yeah. at school. There was an assault. And I think back to, I actually, like, just covered this in my own therapy. So, uh I went through something very traumatic when I was a child and I, to this day, have not told my mom about it. And so it makes me wonder if like she's in that similar situation where it was like when I was a kid, I felt like if I told my mom what had happened, I would feel shame or guilt or like, and it kind of plays into that like rejection sensitivity dysphoria of like, I didn't want my mom to reject me because of something that happened to me. Well, and it's also one of those things, like, a, especially as a, well, I mean, I guess female, male, like stereotypical, like, well, what did you, what did you do to yes. bring that assault on? Because mm-hmm. I know that, like, I've gotten, oh yeah, like, responses like that before, where it's like, well, what did you do to bring that upon yourself? Like, my mom was very like that, like, well, what did you do that made them do that? Or what did you do that made them say that? Or, yeah. you know, what were you wearing that made that? So it's like, especially as a female, like, what were you wearing? Yeah. So it's just like that also can make it, like like you said, bring on that, like, shame of, like, mm-hmm. well, very, very it's just going to get pointed out what I did to cause this and that yeah. it was my fault. And-, and my mom was, like, always so... Like, I was always walking on eggshells with her. Like, the littlest thing would fucking set her off. And so it was like, I wasn't going to tell her anything. Like, she would flip out if I told her something little. So to tell her something, like, big and traumatic, like, mm mm-mm, I did not feel safe to do so. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important, like, even now with Carly, and I know that you do it with Jesse too, that it's like, we would much rather you just tell us the truth, but we never overreact or freak out or make it a big deal like we we just have a conversation about it because we don't want to scare them into thinking that they can't tell us things yeah yeah because that's exactly the situation that she's coming into now is her, her daughter is and afraid to tell her scarier the older that her daughter gets. yeah because she's 11 yeah like that's i couldn't imagine having something like that happen to carly and for nobody to tell me what's going on like that's terrifying yeah yeah, that is terrifying. Ooh. Well, especially because she is naturally already like closed off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And doesn't talk much about her feelings or trying to get her to fucking tell me anything is like pulling teeth. Tell you anything important. Yeah. It's like pulling teeth. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's a daunting Ooh. one. Yeah. Oh. I, 33 male, and my wife, 33 female, how do I go about my wife not wanting to have sex anymore? I, 33 male, have been married to my wife, 33 female, for six years now, and we have two kids together. For the last year and some, we have not had any kind of sex or anything at all. I have brought this up to her many different times and tell her how it makes me feel unwanted, unattractive, and lonely. One of my lung... Lung? One of my lungs. <laughs> One of my love languages is touch and physical contact is a really big thing for me that I want to be able to do with my wife and no one else. So we had to talk about it a few months months ago. God, I can't talk today. <laughs> um, me just asking for even once a month and that to her was even too much. She says she doesn't have any kind of feelings down there or enjoy it at all. She keeps telling me that it's not me. That's the problem. It is her. But I don't feel like That is true at all. She is going to go see a specialist about this soon to see what she can do. So I guess my question is, how do I approach this again? Also, women of Reddit, have you had this issue before? And what, if anything, have you done to correct it? That's a very... Ooh. I don't know. He's having, like, very selfish, like, mentality about it. I'm also... I don't think so. I, I don't... He's, like, it's all about, like, me and, like, I think and like yeah but it but he also my experience what he's ask trying to ask for advice of like what things have worked for them so he mm-hmm. can try to help her yeah well has has he asked her though that's my question 
is like what conversations have you had with your wife about it because i think about it through the lens of uh, and it's a book that i've talked about before on here come as you are where mm-hmm. it talks about like the break system i i'd be very very curious to think of like is it like a sensitivity issue that she's having like is it something that's like medical where she needs to go see a specialist or is she just not interested because she's so fucking overwhelmed like it sounds like they're new parents the last because well, they've been married for six years doesn't mean that their kids came in the last six years oh i guess that's true i mean nick and i are married and we have we aren't married and we have four kids so that's fair that is fair <clears throat> i don't know i don't think that it sounded selfish i think like I mean, he says that they've had conversations and that she said it's not him, that it's her. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I agree he could, like, has he asked, like, what can I do to help you? But she's saying that she doesn't have any healing down there. Yeah, which makes me wonder if she had, like, a C-section or something. Yeah, because that can fuck with your nerves. She might not know how for him to help her. Yeah. And if she did have a C-section or whatever, like, that can make you feel really like self-conscious mm-hmm. and things so i don't think that he sounds selfish i mean if they're not if in two years they haven't ha- had anything i think that he like i mean even if it was me for two years i would be like okay this is <laughs> like <laughs> things are getting a little dry around here <laughs> right. i don't think that he sounds selfish i think he has like a valid concern and i think i think there is an underlying tone of like wanting to help her in the message yeah he maybe just wasn't very good about like articulating that and like it's sometimes are hard to articulate things yeah and, like, i think maybe selfish was the wrong word i'm more see like the thought process that i'm having is like he's very like self-centered that he thinks it's a him issue mm-hmm. where he's very concerned about like what do i need to do to fix this where it's like it doesn't necessarily sound like the issue is with you mm-hmm. and that it's more so she needs something whether that be medical because she's having sensitivity issues or she needs help around the house or like help not being stressed or like help with self-confidence because it's like after having babies like i feel like though if she's at a point even of going to it like willingly going to a specialist then i feel like she would have communicated those needs already yeah. you know like if it were me because like i have communicated those things to nick of like well i need you to fucking help more mm-hmm. like because like i don't want to because you're not like helping take any load off for me yeah. right now like i have so much on my plate i need you to put some on your plate mm-hmm. and so it's like i feel like if that were the issue she would have communicated it because like i wouldn't be going to a i wouldn't be willing to go to a specialist if that's what was bothering me that's my like that's what i'm curious about is like if she's going to a specialist why is homeboy going to reddit you know i mean he's probably just looking for other people's experiences like yeah i guess that's true because he at the end said like have you gone if you've gone to a women of reddit if you've gone Mm. to a specialist like what what was your experience what was your experience with it and he probably like, wants to know they... how he can be supportive of whatever it is and yeah you know because i couldn't even imagine just like not having like any healing whatsoever and just like and like what would they do to fix that yeah i don't know my mind went to like the worst possible thing of like electroshock therapy or something and i was like ah! oh god <laughs> and just like down in your lady bits ah! i just that sounds awful oh i'm uncomfortable now that's funny that you're uncomfortable (laughs) this conversation is supposed to make me uncomfortable usually (laughs) it's the opposite (laughs) yeah it's the electroshock therapy comment really ruined it for me that's funny all right ouch well on that note yeah (laughs) super super sick tell us like what you guys want to hear from us yeah that is a big thing we get a lot of like really supportive comments which is so awesome to see and it's like we've hit encourages us to help like continue doing this yeah and we've hit twenty five thousand views on youtube which is like huge milestone we almost have 100 subscribers Um, it's like we're growing at a pretty a lot more rapidly than i feel like either of us thought that we would yeah but it's also we're just kind of winging it and we're just talking about whatever we want to talk about and so it's 
I'd be genuinely curious. Like, what are you? What do you guys want to know? Yeah. What do you want to know? What do you want us to cover or talk about? Because uh, otherwise, we're just yeah. going to keep doing random shit. Like, do you want to hear us talk about our kids? Complain about our kids? Mm-hmm. more <laughs> i mean our Do whole last want... episode we talked about poop a lot yeah so like that's what you're gonna get if you, and... you don't give us idea <laughs> and nick let us know how he felt about that um yeah. but we're not gonna cater our entire channel to nick yeah. so sorry even but... though it is called dad's x and next he is not the center of yeah. all of this so sorry mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah like do you want to know about like more stuff that we do with our kids or like Mm -hmm. struggles we have with our kids do you want to know like our birth stories um we have some crazy ones so yeah yeah do you want to like do you want to know more about like us as individuals or Mm -hmm. like what what exactly do you guys want us to talk about or or know we're curious yeah otherwise yeah it's just gonna be us up here bullshitting and i mean it's a good time but yeah and like we get to hang out which like doesn't happen that much anymore no (laughs) sadly but yeah let us know what exactly do you want to hear from us on yeah any like parenting things you want us to talk about i don't know there's so much that could be gone over yeah and even if it's something we don't know about we will fake it till we make it, baby. <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. <laughs> um, but until next week, follow us on all the things. Mm-hmm. Thanks again for joining us. And yeah, have a great week. Yeah. Bye. Bye.